What up my BJJ homies? I had a small data crisis that made editing a pain, but I'm back bitches. With a new hard drive, I'm ready to YouTube BJJ, like never before. For this video, I am going to study the recent no-gi passing tactics of the Meow brothers. Though there has been a stereotypical view that they are guard players. As I've been mentioning in small video snippets, both of them are now formidable passers, combining the tactics of Leandro Lo and Mariela Santana. To get right into it. One strategy the Miaos are using increasingly, is using a body lock to pass the guard. The basic premise, is that they wanted to quickly lock your hip down, by connecting their hands and tripoding. From here, while your hips are pinned, the idea is to advance up the body to get a cross face. Once the cross face is on, wedging out to finish the pass should be straightforward. The Miaos are creative in finding the body lock, and now connect the body lock to their inversion techniques. As you can see, Miao has locked his hands around the body as he goes for a crab right back take. Here, he gets his hooks and controls the back. When the opponent's back manages to touch the floor first, taking the back might not be so easy. Here during a leg lock attempt from 50-50, the opponent's back hits the floor first, blocking the back take. To counter this, Miao gets to his knees to get a pass instead. These two moves combine well especially against someone trying 50-50 on them. They can dive to your back, and go for the leg drag or crab ride to get your back. Or if that fails for some reason, because their hands are already locked around your torso, they can start going for a body lock pass by getting up to their knees. But let's get back to the details of body lock passing. Some people are getting worked up, over this supposedly new method of passing. But the reality of passing is this. Aping the motions of a technique, without understanding the underlying strategy accompanying the moves, will only get you so far. Having a body lock isn't some magical tech that will solve your passing problems. You need to be aware of a garter's hip movements, and the correct choices to make when those movements occur. Let's begin by studying, how important it is, for a guard player's hips to have freedom to move. Watch this sequence between Joao Miao and Augusto Mendez. Mendez has advanced to half guard and has maybe even a bit of a cross face. But this is a dead end, look at what Joao does next, note, that Joao is on his side and his hips are sideways. His hips back out into space and he re-guards easily. All that effort, only to have a simple hip movement, reset you back to square one. Getting a tight body lock or a cross face doesn't guarantee a pass. Here one of the Miaos has a body lock and is trying to flatten the hips. All the garter has to do is find a moment to turn sideways, giving their back freedom to escape. In a split second, a knee shield has been recovered, and very shortly multiple limbs have space to sneak in a frame. In this other example, a Miao has locked on a cross face and has moved high up the body. Again the hips are already flattened, and it looks like a pass is imminent. This time with the hips flat. The garter pummels a foot in and wedges. Now the hips can turn and he regards. But let's break this down a bit more. It isn't really the fact that the hips turn that create the problem. It is almost impossible to completely stop someone's hips from moving. Rather, what you choose to do when the hips start turning is critical to your passing success. In a nutshell, whether you have a cross face, underhook or body lock, the moment you sense the hips turning, you need to either turn them back down or cover them. Turning the hips down is straightforward enough, you are basically using force to reflatten the hips to the mat again. This can be done with a tripod, or a strong cross face. You have to match power with power and grind the garter out. But at least you have gravity on your side. Here is an example of the straightforward turning of the hips back to a flattened position. Here the opponent's hips are turned back down via a cross face with linked arms. Flattened, the hips have nowhere to back out to. Pass completion is only a matter of time. However, that was an ideal situation. Most of the time, a guard player's hips may turn very suddenly, or you might not be able to cross face and force the hips flat again. In that case, looking to cover the hips is the goal. In other words trying to force the smash pass or weave position. Here Paolo Miao has no cross face. All he can do is lock hands around the legs. First, you can see that he tries to tripod and re-flatten the hips. The moment he fails though, 
he steps over to cover the hips when the turn happens. Again he tries to re-flatten the hips as the guard players tries to turn the other way. But when he fails, he immediately covers the hips again. In other words, he may not be able to stop your hips from turning, but he can at least make sure you cannot shrimp properly to create space, even if you can turn. This time, he manages to pin both legs with his shin and windshield wipers over to pass. Even when you have a strong body lock and can flatten the hips, a turn is almost inevitable. Rather than trying to muscle your way back into a flattened position, you are better off thinking one move ahead and looking to cover the hips. Here, Paolo knows he is going to lose this body lock battle, as more limbs come into play and start framing. Instead, he allows the turn and covers, where he can windshield wiper to the other side. Once you can cover the hips, there are many ways to finish the pass. You can use your legs to kick free from entanglements for example. In this case, we have a leg drag situation. Note Paolo is trying to cover the hips while he leg fights. Another way to finish from the weave, is to chair sit to take the back. Here Joao has covered the hips, when the opponent turned away from his knee slide. Now pinned in the weave position, rather than try to kick free to pass, Joao chair sits, with his legs still entangled, to take the back. You can also reverse this concept. In other words, if you cannot cover the hips, then you can try to re-flatten them. Here you can see that Rodolfo is unable to cover Benson Henderson's hips to get to a weave position. Instead he sits on the shin, and re-flattens the hips so that Benson cannot shrimp out. Now he moves to a knee slide on the other side. Alrighty, I'm going to wrap it up here. Body locking is just one way to control the upper body when you are passing. Perfecting a technique is not just about following the steps in an instructional to a T. Understanding your goal, in this case, to keep the hips flat, or to have an appropriate response, if you can't stop the turn, is key. That is how you can start to make sense of the small, critical movements that an elite passer is making. These adjustments and details are the things that make their passes successful. They are constantly adapting and preempting their opponent's moves to stay one step ahead. Body locking while effective works for the Miaos just as well as a cross face or an underhook, because they are constantly aware of the garter's hip movements. No one has done a DVD on their passing yet, but if you are interested in their guard work, do check out the Miao DVDs on BJJ Fanatics. There is also some body lock passing on Yuri Simo's DVD, and I have also done a video on him. As far as the concept of covering the hips go, do check out my recent Hamulo studies. Anyways, Hope you found this study on the no-gi tactics of the Miyaos useful. With no grips, you will need to use anticipation to front-run the guard player's shrimping movements. There are many other ways to capitalize on the hips turning, like punching for weaves if your hands, using cradles, or going for headlocks rather than cross faces. Studies for another time. Take care all.